Hello ladies and gentlemen. Have you ever wondered who the Hebrew race are? What people belong to it? The Bible tells us exactly about the Hebrew race and who belongs to it. In Numbers chapter 36, 5 through 13, I'll start at verse 6. This is the thing which the Lord doth command concerning the daughters of Zelophehad, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best, only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe, for every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter that possesseth an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father, that the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another tribe, but every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. I'll stop at verse 9. Now what this scripture is telling us is that the Hebrew race is a patrilineal race. And what I mean by that is, well, Jacob had sons, and Jacob, the patriarch, uh, had, his sons were patriarchs, and each man uh, was of his own tribe, and their children, for instance, Judah was a son of Jacob. Their children were to marry among themselves to keep their inheritance in Israel. The children of Israel or of Judah were not to marry uh, into the tribe of, uh, say, Dan or, or uh, another son of Jacob. They were to keep the inheritance within their own tribes. Noah had three sons, Shem, Japheth, and Ham. The patriarch Jacob was a Semitic man who descended from Shem. And the Hebrew race, or sub-races, are from the sons of Jacob, of which he had twelve. The Apostle Paul in the New Testament was a descendant of Benjamin, who was a descendant of uh, Jacob. So the Apostle Paul was a, a Hebrew man. And the way the Hebrew race is determined is patrilineal. Uh, each male that has a has children has to has to keep his children in, in his own tribe the daughters of uh, of one tribe were not supposed to marry into a, uh, a family of another tribe for instance the children in a tribe of Judah who was the son of Jacob were to marry within the same tribe, someone, uh, one of the descendants of uh, Judah. And as for Dan, the same way, the, the women were to find their males within their own tribe, and Judah from Judah, and Dan from Dan, and from all the twelve sons, each tribe was to keep its marriages within its own, own tribe. Now, the scriptural reference for this is in Numbers 36, 
5 through 13. And this was how the inheritance was determined for the people of Israel. By keeping within their own tribes and not losing their inheritance. Today, we have a lot of people who call themselves Jews that are not Hebrew people. Many of these uh, people that call themselves Jews are, are European or uh, which the Europeans are supposed to be or are thought to be from uh, Japheth, one of the sons of Noah, not Shem. And uh, a lot of the people today that claim to be uh, Jews are, are mixed. They have, may have some Semitic traits and they may have some European traits or some other traits. But what they are not, they did not keep within the tribes patrilineally as was described in Numbers 36. Quote, all these had taken strange wives and they put them away with their children. Unquote. That's the King James uh, Version Apocrypha. So even if the separated children were partly Hebrew, God's chosen race, they still were not accepted among the men in Israel because of the strange woman. See this in, in Ezra 10, what it's talking about is the children of Israel married uh, into the foreign tribes and it was not they couldn't be accepted into the congregation of Israel and so they had to put away the women that they had married and the children that they bore from those women so the child even though being partly Jewish well partly Hebrew I should should say but partly Gentile, having non-Hebrew genetics, did not have the favor and inheritance that the child of Hebrew parents had. The child was separated from the community. Therefore, as a religious racial rule, and to take in thought concerning the dispensations of God, of God's Word, and the detrimental effect of miscegenation upon posterity, divorce, forced segregation, and deportation, it is generally commendable for racists to promote anti-miscegenation laws among themselves. Really, the Hebrew people had to work at keeping their people within their own tribes and this virtue has been perverted greatly since uh, New Testament times since the, the Romans destroyed a lot of the uh, rebellious Hebrew people uh, around 70 AD and as, as the centuries went on miscegenation took place uh, and, and a group called the Khazars came into play and they were not of a Semitic race and many people today that, as I said that claim to be Jews are really not Jews or Hebrew people and they actually don't even go by the patrilineal rule. They go by a matrilineal rule. The people who claim to be Jewish today go by whether their mother was Jewish and that her only religion was acceptance of the Talmud or Jewish. Completely different from the law of Moses and uh, Tanakh, yet many people don't even realize that.